Hey robot makers, do you want to build your own little robot just like this one? It can read data from this little sensor here, display it on the front of its stomach and send that data up to the cloud using Wi-Fi. Then keep watching. So I'm calling this project Weatherbot. So let's have a look at how we make a Weatherbot. So we start out with the sensor. So this is called a DHT22. Now there are other DHT sensors available. They come in different packages. So this is the DHT22, which is on screen now. It's a little white package. There is a slightly less accurate version, which is slightly cheaper. And this is in the blue package. That's a DHT11. And there's also this smaller one, which is the AM2320. And this uses the I squared C interface, but these are a little bit more expensive. So the great thing about these DHT22s is they're very cheap. They only need 3.3 volts, which is great because our ESP8266 uses three volts. So we can use these like very, very simple. They just require one pin. So next our project is gonna use a small servo. Now these are called SG90s. We've used them in all kinds of projects before. Uh, they're a very simple servo and the connector only has three pins. In the middle, we have the voltage. And the beauty of that is you can never actually put this in the wrong way around because the, the middle pin is always voltage. And we have a signal on one side, which is the orange pin and the brown pin is the ground. And then we have the ESP8266. Sometimes these are called Node MCUs. And in fact, this one I've got here has the Node MCU branding on it by Amica. It's actually the ESP1 chip, which is one of these absolutely minute chips which is one of these very small chips. They're not very breadboard friendly. And what they've done is they've simply just put that onto a package. So you can see there, this little chip is basically just put onto the uh, a nicer packaging with easier pinouts that's breadboard friendly. And there's a nice USB header as well, so we can get data on it very simply. So this has got the extensor processor, uh, runs at 80 megahertz, has 32 kilobytes of RAM, but they usually come with between one and four meg of onboard flash RAM, so we can store some programs on them as well. So how do we wire this up? It's quite a simple project to wire up. I've got an example here on the breadboard that I was uh, experimenting with. So we just need that one pin from the temperature sensor and that's hot on this diagram is the green cable there. The first pin is the voltage so that's just taking a three volt supply from the node MCU and the ground is also going to one of the ground pins too. And then the servo we are going to use this orange cable here which is the signal and we've also got the voltage and ground next to that conveniently too. That's all we need to do to wire this up nice and simple. So I've been thinking about this for a while. This is all well and good having things on breadboards but sometimes we want to make our projects a little bit more more interesting so, so I thought what would be great would be to actually use the servo to display what the temperature is as a, as a little gauge so in the middle straight up would be the average kind of room temperature maybe 20 degrees 25 degrees and then on the extreme right would be 50 degrees and then the extreme left would be zero degrees so what I want Weatherbot to do I want it to get the temperature I want to post it to an MQTT server and we've looked at MQTT before using node red and we want to present that data using a dashboard so we can have some nice widgets and display that and we can access that on mobile phone devices and so on I also want to display the temperature on the robots stomach using a servo and you can see there we've got the servo horn right in the middle and that can swing round as a little gauge. And we want to make it fun and cute and we want to be able to use cheap and available parts. I've also shared the code for this project so if you go to github slash Kevin McAleer slash node MCU underscore Wi-Fi you'll find the code there. I've also created a little decal so that we can read off the temperatures a little bit easier and it's just a little piece of card that we can print out and then stick to our robot also giving it an eyeball as well and the decal has been calibrated for the code. I've designed the robot using Fusion 360 so it's quite a simple design. Uh, I designed it around the servo. I started with the servo first of all because I knew that was going to be the main component and everything else was scaled around that. So everything's push fit there's no need for screws or anything Thin, everything just held in place by friction and the model is separated into two parts there's a head part and a, a body part the body part is where all the electronics are stored the head part is just there for show we could put some extra sensors in there I was thinking about maybe a light sensor in the eye um, or some other sensors perhaps uh, but for now this is the uh, version one is very simple and we can see there the node MCU sticks in the back of the robot and I purposely thought how could I make this a bit more interesting by having the robot actually hold the sensor in its, its little hand? So we can see there the robot is actually holding the sensor 
in his little hand. We can actually take that out if we want to. So it comes out quite easily and just goes back into place there. So it just makes the robot a bit more interesting and we can see all the wiring, how all that works. So there's the back of the node MCU. We can see the wires and the servo connecting in straight there. And I can pull the head off and we can have a look inside and see the servo is just inside there. And there's plenty of room for other things if we wanted to. And we can see the little gauge there. So it says Weatherbot in a nice sort of script font, smilesfan.com logo. To show that it's working and it's woken up, it'll move its little dial. To move it from zero to 50 degrees and then it'll go to the correct temperature for the room that it's in. So everything's designed to be push fit, like I've said. There's no need for screws or any kind of glue. Everything's just friction fit and pushes nicely into place and then the DHT22 simply slots into the robot's hand and there's a tiny little ledge to stop it from falling through. So I've used Node Red to capture those settings from the MQTT server and we can then present that using a dashboard. I've got a Raspberry Pi 4 here and I've got Node Red running on this so if you want to install Node Red and you've not already got that installed you can go down to preferences, go down to the recommended software and it's one of the options on there under the programming section and to start it we can just go up to the programming and just click on the Node Red icon and that will start it running locally. Once it's running, we can then connect to the interface and on here we'll create a new flow so that we can experiment with this. First of all, I'm going to get an MQTT in node and drag that across and I'm also going to get the debug node so we can have a look and see what some of the messages are that are coming from the robot. If I grab the debug node and then I just connect them together with a little noodle and then I'm going to double click on the MQTT node so that I can configure it. It will need an MQTT server, so if I click on this little button here we can see an example one. So I've got one running on my local network. This is also a Raspberry Pi that's running Mosquito. And that's all I've done. I've said that there's a, a server running Mosquito on, on an IP address. So now I need to specify a topic. And a topic is kind of like a channel that this is listening to. So I've created a topic called Weatherbot. So what I'm going to do is just type in Weatherbot and I'm going to click done. And if I now click deploy, any messages that are going to that Weatherbot topic will appear in this payload. So we can see now that we're starting to capture some data from the Weatherbot. So that 19.6 is the actual temperature in this room the moment. If we want to make that into something a bit more interesting we can drag in some extra nodes here. So I've loaded in using the palettes, manage palette, I've added in the dashboard. So if we search for node red dashboards that's the package I've got installed there 2.29.1. So I've got some extra modules down the left hand side here. So one of these is a gauge. So if I pull the gauge out and I connect that weather box to the gauge as well. And let's just configure the options in here. So I'm going to say this is from ranging from 0 to 50. And we're going to label it weather temperature. And then we're going to deploy that. Now if I want to see that, I can go to the dashboard. So if I click this little link here on the dashboard option, that will launch the dashboard user interface. So we can see there now we've got the weather widget, which is using a gauge and it's currently showing between 0 and 50 and it's 19.5 which is what the current temperature is that it's reading. Our robot is also displaying about 19 so at the very top is about 25 and it's just to the left of that so it's around about 20 so it's working accurately. So what this means is we've got a nice little robot we can put on a shelf somewhere, we can connect up a, a mobile phone type charger and it'll just show what the current temperature is as well as publishing that up to our MQTT server. We can capture that data with something like Node-RED. We could even write that out to a file if we wanted to and log what the current temperatures have been. And it's a fun little project which doesn't require very many parts. Um, it takes about 10 hours to print. Um, I did this on the fine print but you can probably do it much quicker if you have a lower quality print. So I'm very interested to see people do this. I'll share both the code and the, the STL files of this in the description below. And hopefully I shall see you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.